Hi, this is Sager Maori, cardiology fellow at Henry Ford Hospital. Uh, and uh, we're here at the 2019 American College of Cardiology Conference in New Orleans. I have the pleasure of having with us today Dr. Jihad Mustafa, who is a uh, renowned interventional cardiologist uh, and endovascular specialist, particularly in the area of critical limb ischemia uh, interventions and amputation prevention. He is uh, a founder of uh, the Amputation Prevention, prevention Centers. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us, Dr. Mustafa. Thank you so much, and uh, really, it's a pleasure to be talking to a fellow. And this is, um, goes out to all the fellows of all specialties, actually. If you're thinking about doing peripheral vascular disease in the future, or CLI work in particular, and you're a fellow right now, I would like to give you an advice that it's not going to happen very often. Um, take the opportunity that you have right now and learn as much PV as possible. And if you don't have enough training at the center that you're at, make an effort to seek places like mine, for instance. We have a fellowship for CLI and PV. Uh, we have people that spend six months and people that spend one year. And I gotta tell you, the return on investment in doing something like this is unparalleled. Because by the time you leave our center, your confidence in doing complex CLI work is significantly higher than anyone else who has been doing the work for years. And if, if you wonder why would that be valuable, when you're by yourself down the line five years from the day you left us, you'll be able to do things extremely helpful and you'll be able to change the lives of so many. Uh, trying to learn on a job for CLI is not the same as learning on a job like Stanton LEX or SFA. That's great advice, Dr. Mustafa. I really appreciate it, and I think the fellows would be uh, uh, very much appreciative of that as well. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it, a lot of fellows, as you mentioned, might not get the necessary exposure early on, and it's not really until their interventional year, yes. uh, and, and at that time they uh, try to seek opportunities. What advice do you have for, for younger fellows early on in their training who may not necessarily be you know, exposed? For example, what, you know, what got you into this field? Uh, why, why is it that you care so much about CLI and how can other folks uh, you know, kind of develop that same passion? So to, to answer these questions uh, in, in order, so early on fellows need to recognize their passion. If they have a passion for PAD or CLI, uh, you should make your, your elective rotations uh, in centers that are busy. So for instance, in our center we do about 100 CLI cases. That's 100 CLI cases a month. So imagine if you came and did a rotation with us for a month, uh, you, you, see, you get to see 100 CLI patients and probably 50 PADs, 150 in one month. So for, for those that are interested in early on, use your elective wisely. That's um, an advice. The one thing that I see, and, and I want to actually raise the point to all the fellows that are listening, and actually those are a year or two out of fellowship. Uh, many of you think that um, I'll wait till I finish work, and then I'll come back and get some more training. But it, what happens, you go into the life of working, and you realize suddenly your partners are asking you to stand this and do this, and you don't have the expertise, and you try to get back into training. And let me tell you, it is so much harder to actually be in practice and come back to train. Your partners may not let you. Uh, the financial um, uh, sacrifice you have to make is so significant. So therefore, I'm glad you're doing this right now for the fellows to actually uh, do it either while they're training or immediately after training. That is the best way and the most effective way. I'm glad you actually raised this point, Dr. Mustafa. It's very important because I, there are times when uh, practicing uh, interventional cardiologists then take back after having been out uh, in practice for a period of time to acquire those additional skills in endovascular intervention, for instance, or, or structural heart interventions, etc. cetera. Uh, do you think that uh, program directors of, of endovascular programs uh, look favorably if, if uh, applicants have been out there and have uh, been in practice for a while or or folks who just finished their interventional training and continue directly does it really matter or or you know because some fellows have this impression that you know they should be out there to acquire extra skills and confidence and then come back to do uh, advanced training 
you know uh, this is the um, sort of men the the mentality that does, that is that currently exists out there yeah. i agree with you now it, do i think it's the right thing to do no i don't it's a misconception yeah. because when you go back into practice um, i've been in practice i went through this you're so busy you're so busy uh, as a cardiologist taking stemi call rounding i can go on and on and on about the things that you have to do and your work in PAD becomes a secondary component. Now, if you think of it this way, you might get some cases here and there as you go. And, and the number I hear from colleagues that come back to us to train with us, you know, we've done 50 this year or 100 this year, something like that. Well, this is really not the same as actually finishing your intervention fellowship and coming and doing six months and do 600 patients. Now when you leave with 600 patients, you're empowered with significant amount of knowledge and confidence to do the right thing, which is number one, to avoid complications, number two, to have great outcomes, and number three is to know what to do uh, with patients uh, from the day they walk into your office to the day you save their leg and now you're in the maintenance phase of preserving the limb. So I would say right after fellowship. And if I may ask you just one last question, uh, this is a question that often comes up among fellows is, you know, some worry that if they go on to, you know, spend another six months or a year of advanced training, that they may, you know, lose some, some of the coronary intervention experience. What, how do you advise fellows who have this concern? You know, um, I got to tell you, fellows, if you uh, go to train in PV and CLI in particular, I guarantee you, your skills is going to get 100 times better. Trying to cross a 90% uh, or 99% coronary lesion uh, versus trying to cross 300 millimeter or 600 millimeter infrainguinal lesion, uh, imagine your skills and the tips and tricks that you use. Because it's all about the physics, right? Uh, we have few fellows that have left us so far, and they call and say their coronary skills actually is augmented and they're doing so much more complex lesions because of the ability to maneuver in the tibials, trans tibial, trans collateral, fetal loops, and it goes on. So to answer the question simply, no, it does not affect it. Great. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, if you want to uh, see more of these videos, please uh, go to youtube.com slash fits on the go.